Good afternoon. Good I am Rasita Secret Kroon, Program Coordinator of NIDA, Network for the Development of Agricultural Cooperatives in Asia and the Pacific. Today, I am pleased to welcome everyone to the NIDA keynote co-op talk on fish feed business updates on the aqua feed industry in China, which will be presented by Dr. Ho Guo Xi from China. So first of all, I would like to introduce Honorary Director of NIDA, Dr. K. R. Salin. I request him to speak a few words, please, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rasita. And uh, welcome once again. Good afternoon, morning, or good evening for wherever you are. Uh, welcome again to this, uh, this uh, discussion, what we call the COPE Talk, uh, which is a, a kind of keynote series that NIDAC has started since the last month, just last month in April 2021 as we all working home from home and then trying to do something creative to the society for which we are working for. Uh, and for those of who, uh, who do not know about NIDAC, uh, NIDAC in fact stands for the Network for the Development of Agricultural Cooperatives in Asia and the Pacific. Uh, NIDAC was established in 1991 by the uh, FAO's regional uh, office for the Asia Pacific in okay. and also the International Cooperative Alliance, ICA, and the organization. So, uh, NIDAC works as an intergovernmental international alliance for many of the agricultural cooperatives in the Asia Pacific region and also in Africa. So, uh, the COP talk series, uh, keynote series, uh, we launched last month with a talk from Bangladesh. And this month, we are introducing uh, a speaker from China, uh, Dr. Hugo Zhu, who is a senior researcher at the LOC Fisheries Research Institute under the Chinese Academy of Fisheries Sciences, which is a premier research organization in China based in Qingdao. Uh, Dr. Hu Gu Zhu is a well-known expert in aquatic nutrition and feed technology. He has published uh, more than 100 research articles in peer-reviewed journals. He has also received many awards from the government and also from the provincial governments in China. And he also has five patents to his credit. So we got a very well-known expert today to give us an overview of the Chinese aquifer industry. And then uh, we will follow it with a discussion, kind of discussion uh, that all of you can ask him questions. And then uh, I think he'd be very happy to explain everything to you about the Chinese aquifer industry and its prospects for the future. So over to you, Hugo. So you can share your screen uh, and then introduce yourself and then share your screen, yes. Thanks. Oh, uh, please check the setting. It says that I'm I'm not allowed to to share the the, the desk. Uh, Yeah, uh, can you give the access to? Uh... Oh, uh, it says that I'm not allowed to share the desk. Yeah, I think uh, he, he, you need the access. Though. I think, can you, you give the access to him? Don't get Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, now you can do it. Yeah. 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 
So can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, uh, let's get started. Uh, my name is Ho Guoxi. I'm from Yellow Sea Fisheries Research Institute uh, in Qingdao. And today um, uh, it's my honor to give this presentation. Uh, my topic is a brief introduction of China's uh, aquifer industry. So I'm happy to uh, talk something about China's aquifer industry. Sorry, there are some lines uh, on the on the PPT. So I I'll start again. I think it's okay. I think I think it's okay. It's okay. Uh, you you want to start again? Yeah, you, you can try again. Yeah, no problem. Okay, sorry, wait a moment, please. Yeah, now it's okay. Okay, uh, let's get started. Uh, so uh, generally there are there are four uh, main stages of development of aquifer industry in China. So the first one, stage one, is before uh, 1980s, is the sprout uh, stage. So the farmers mainly use natural phase or house-made uh, uh, phase. Uh, the feed concession ratio during this stage is uh, uh, from four to 10. And the stage two is between uh, 1980s to 1990s is the starting uh, stage. The, uh, during this stage, the research has begun and the feed type has diversified. The FCR uh, during this stage is three to four. Uh, the third stage is around uh, 2000 is the rapid growth uh, stage. Uh, during this stage, uh, systemized research has been done and the big uh, feed companies has emerged. Uh, the FCR during this stage is two to three. Uh, the fourth uh, stage is the uh, last decade is uh, improving and the specializing stage. So during this stage, uh, precise nutrition research has been done and the uh, standard production of feed has been uh, reached. And we are focusing on quality and safety uh, in this stage, the FCR of uh, uh, represent, representative species uh, uh, can be uh, around one to two. Uh, so before introducing the aquafit uh, industry, I want to give a, a very uh, brief introduction of the development of China's animal feed industry. Uh, China's animal feed industry started from 1970s. Uh, it reached the number one uh, place of the world in 2011. And now it accounts for 17% uh, of the world's total animal feed production. Uh, the total uh, feed animal, uh, animal feed production of uh, 2020 is, the two, uh, is more than 200 million tons. It increased by 10.4% uh, compared uh, to, uh, to uh, 2019. Uh, the proportion of aquafit in the total uh, animal feed in uh, 2020, uh, aquafit account, account for 8.4% uh, uh, of total animal feed, uh, decreasing by 1.2% uh, than uh, the year before. Uh, so from this finger, we can see the distribution of feed production uh, uh, between animals, among animals. So the biggest is broiler. Uh, it comes about 36%. Uh, and the second is why uh, it uh, counts for um, about 35%. And then the layer, uh, more than 10%. And then aquafit accounts for 
8.4% uh, kind of uh, ruminants feed. So this is a general uh, uh, distribution. Uh, so the uh, proportion of uh, uh, China's feed proportion of uh, sorry, wait a moment, please. I want to to draw this bar. Uh, yeah. The proportion of China's aqua feed in was uh, total uh, aqua feed production. Uh, so uh, from this figure, we can see that uh, the aqua uh, feed production in China is uh, a uh, is number one uh, all over the world. It counts uh, thirty five percent of the world's total production, and the second and Vietnam has the second biggest uh, production, and then uh, India, uh, uh, Indo India about uh, sixty percent, uh, six percent, and Indonesia about five percent, and then Norway and then other countries. Uh, if we look at the aqua feed production. Uh, distribution all over the world uh, in 2019 across continents, we can find that uh, the Asia Pacific uh, dominates over the aquifer production in the world. Uh, so it accounts to uh, more than 70% of the, the total production of the world. And then Latin America, about 10%, and Europe, 9%, and North America, and Africa, Middle East, and Oceania less than 1%. Uh, this is finger uh, tells us the production of Chinese aqua feed during the past decades. Uh, so uh, we can see from uh, 2011 to 2018, uh, so it's uh, uh, keep increasing, uh, but uh, from 2018 to uh, 2000 and, uh, uh, 20, uh, it has decreased. This information is very important because we can see that the aqua feed uh, production in China is decreasing. Uh, the distribution of aqua feed uh, in China by species. Uh, we know that uh, uh, the species, aquaculture species in China is very diverse. We have more than uh, 100. <laughs> freshwater uh, fish species and uh, uh, more than 60 marine fish species. This is only for fish, but if we uh, include the shellfish, uh, the uh, crustacean, the reptiles, there will be uh, several hundred species. So it's very diverse. Uh, so from this finger, we can see this is the, uh, the topic species, the top species in, in China. And if we uh, uh, make a general uh, category by species, we can see that the freshwater fish uh, include the common and bulk ones and the non-common ones. The common and bulk ones include uh, grass carp, number one grass carp, and number two maybe a common carp and a crucian carp and then tilapia. The non-common uh, species includes the large mouth black sea bass, snake, snake head, and yellow catfish, and so on. Uh, marine fish, there are uh, more than 60 species uh, for marine fish. Uh, the number one is uh, large yellow croaker, and then grouper, uh, sea bass, and pompna, uh, shrimp, and crab. We have uh, uh, four uh, main uh, shrimp species, and then crab, and uh, uh, very important, we have a very a large production of crayfish and others like bow uh, frog, uh, Chinese turtle, Chinese sturgeon, uh, sea cucumber, and abalone. Uh, this is a general uh, comparison between the top species. Uh, the volume of the circle uh, include, uh, indicates the production uh, comparison. So we can see that uh, grass carp had, has the, the uh, biggest uh, production, and then common carp, uh, uh, crucian carp, and uh, tilapia, crayfish, uh, crab, uh, 
The yellow ones uh, indicate the marine species. The marine species we can see uh, the biggest one is white shrimp. And the shrimp we have uh, uh, shrimp cultured in seawater and, uh, and those in fresh water. So, uh, white, so the seawater plus fresh water, the total feed production is uh, about 1.2 a million tons. So uh, from the comparison, we can uh, generally uh, see the other, uh, the production of the other species. Uh, so uh, the host uh, asked me to uh, talk more about shrimp. So I uh, put uh, another four uh, species here. Uh, These uh, uh, two freshwater uh, species, uh, uh, giant uh, freshwater palm and uh, um, uh, pernicious uh, monodon uh, with uh, fresh water. And uh, another two uh, marine uh, seawater uh, species, uh, uh, pernicious, Japanicious, pernicious Chinese. So uh, this five uh, shrimp species is the species, the shrimp species mainly cultured in China. Um, uh, there are some species uh, which have uh, most rapid growth during the last years in China. Uh, first is marine fish feed. Uh, with the development of marine fish uh, aquaculture, the marine fish feed also uh, grow, grow uh, rapidly. Uh, now the pro total production is about 2 million tons. And then crayfish feed uh, about 600,000 tons. Uh, crayfish is more and more, uh, it's getting more and more popular in China. And uh, the production is very high. And so the, the feed production is also high. And then large mouth black sea bass feed. Uh, the feed is about uh, 200,000 uh, uh, tons. So this only account for half the feed. Another half product production used trash fish. And then uh, crab feed. For uh, freshwater uh, crab feed, we have about 600,000 uh, tons. And for seawater crab uh, feed, we have about 400,000 tons. And then uh, silk cucumber feed, and then uh, rice field eel feed also have a very uh, big production. Uh, this uh, finger tells us about the distribution of aqua feed in China by feed type. Uh, from the left figure, we can uh, see that the proportion of formulated feed uh, is still low. And in 2019, it's only about one fourth. So uh, another 75% uh, is uh, uh, using uh, trash fish directly. And the, from the right figure, we can see that in the formulated feed, uh, the pellet feed still dominate, uh, dominates. The extruded feed only accounts for about uh, uh, 70%. So the pellet feed still accounts uh, for uh, uh, more than 80%. Uh, there are also, also some other feed types uh, like the pounder feed, uh, they are used for some uh, specific species, such as puffer fish and eel. Uh, also, some new feed types, such as uh, fermented feed, are increasingly used. Uh, in some uh, species, uh, such as sea bass, uh, pampana, and especially shrimp, 100% uh, formulated feed are used. So uh, in the aquaculture of this species, uh, uh, not a single trash fish is used. Uh, but in some marine uh, carnivorous uh, species such as large yellow croaker and sea bream, uh, plenty of low value fish, uh, we also call them trash fish, are still uh, directly used as feed. Uh, China government is now uh, discussing about uh, whether and when to launch a law to forbid uh, the direct use of low-value fish uh, as aqua feed. Uh, extrude, uh, extruded feed is getting more and more popular, but uh, the price is still higher than pellet uh, feed. Uh, for shrimp feed, 
uh, only less than 10% is excluded feed. So that's uh, 10,000 uh, tons out of the uh, total production, uh, 1.2 uh, million tons. Uh, so the excluded feed uh, is only uh, doing some middle scale companies. Uh, shrimp feed is very diverse in type in terms of price, quality, and uh, uh, fish meal contents. Uh, it's often determined by cultural mode. Uh, many fish are developed for uh, polyculture, like uh, fish plus shrimp. Uh, I'm not sure if you are familiar with the comparison uh, between pelleted feed and extruded feed. So I'll uh, give a brief introduce, introduction here about the comparison between these two uh, feed types. So for the extruded uh, feeds uh, in the pro uh, processing, it experienced a very high temperature as high as one, uh, more than 100 degree. Uh, so it can kill the bacteria and it uh, can uh, cook the feed ingredients. And uh, for the extruded feed, we can also control the floatability and, uh, and we can uh, spring some uh, heat sensitive uh, nutrients onto the feed after pelleting. And we can also control the density and the stability uh, in water. Uh, so uh, uh, also uh, using spring, uh, uh, especially vacuum spring, we can uh, add uh, a very high uh, lipid level uh, into the feed. Like uh, for salmon feed, we can add as high as more than 30% uh, lipids. Uh, but uh, for the pelleted feed, uh, we can only uh, add about uh, uh, 15 or 16 uh, percent uh, lipid. Uh, but the, the cost of extruded feed is still uh, much higher than the pelleted feed. Uh, next part, I will uh, give. Uh, 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 introduction or overview of China's aquafit companies and their running. Uh, so uh, this uh, finger uh, tells us the market share of China's aquafit companies in 2019. Uh, so number one is uh, Haida, uh, Hide. Uh, it uh, takes about uh, 14% uh, and then Tongwei Group uh, about 10% and then uh, New Hope, uh, Iowa Green and Da Bei Nong, uh, and then Yue Hai CP from Thailand and then East Hope Tech Bank, uh, Well Hope. Uh, so this is a general uh, distribution. Uh, a very uh, important information is about the concentration ratio of the head companies. Uh, the, head, the concentration ratio of the head companies keeps increasing. Uh, so from this figure, we can see that uh, uh, in 2014, the, uh, concentration, the concentration of uh, ratio of uh, the top five uh, companies accounts for uh, thir about 30 percent and uh, uh, in I do not hear the voice. Yeah, I think the, is there any issue from the network? Okay. Um, I think from Google's end. I think I, I think uh, there is a network issue from Dr. Hugo's end there.
Yeah, I, I guess there is a network issue. You are disconnected. Um, yeah, he got disconnected now. I, I'm trying to contact him. Yeah, I, I just talked to him. There is an internet disconnection there. Uh, so uh, he's trying to connect back. I'm so sorry for the inconvenience. Yeah, I think he is connecting back. Yeah, I think uh, we can see you, Doctor. We can see you, Hugo. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, please uh, check the setting again. I, I can't uh, share the desk. Hmm? Yeah, you can do it now. Okay. What are you doing? Okay. Yes, this uh, this slide. So, so where I where I stopped this slide? Yeah, I think you can start from here. That's fine. Okay, yeah. so I, I I finished this one. Yeah, this one, yes. Okay. Okay, I I can start from the next uh, slide. Uh, so uh, although the concession ratio will continue to uh, increase, uh, higher middle or small companies can still survive in a long period. Uh, there are more than there are still more than two uh, uh, three thousand aquafit companies in China. So the uh, average production scale is only uh, five point five thousand tons. Uh, the scattered distribution of aquaculture activities supports the survival of small companies. Uh, some small companies have uh, competitive advantages in some uh, specific local area some specific species or some specific agriculture modes. Uh, big companies are good at uh, technique research, uh, cost uh, control while uh, large scale production and large scale feed and ingredients purchase. And they also have uh, more capital inputs. But small companies, they are good at flexible marketing and specialization uh, in specific areas. And this while while uh, differentiate com uh, competition. Uh, the marketing strategies in aqua uh, feed companies of China. Uh, so this part I want to talk about uh, the middleman uh, system. So middleman system plays very important roles in aqua feed marketing. 
and they connect airport feed companies and farmers. They are uh, indispensable because unlike livestock industry, agriculture terminal farmers, uh, they are, they are uh, always uh, in remote area. They lack big companies, big farms. Uh, most of the farmers, they are house scale farmers. Uh, so uh, we need the middleman system. The middleman uh, usually also sell uh, drugs and other products. They, they not, they, uh, not only sell uh, feed, but also drugs and other, uh, other products. And they also buy fish uh, products from uh, the farmers and uh, sometimes they uh, provide loans to them. So uh, they actually uh, 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 play a role in our uh, marketing and uh, bank. Uh, some uh, companies, they usually have only, uh, especially uh, some small companies, they have only one middleman grid, but uh, big companies uh, may have several grids. Uh, uh, this slide, I want to uh, emphasize on a new and efficient marketing uh, strategy, uh, that is service marketing. Uh, when selling fees, the some big companies, they also provide uh, free service to help the farmers to increase the fish production at the same time. By this, they can uh, reinforce uh, customer sickness and by the way, uh, they can uh, earn more uh, profit by selling uh, health products. Uh, this strat strategy uh, is, uh, is very successful because uh, we know that agriculture is actually an uh, experience intense industry. And the farmers, they really they need they need this service to produce uh, more fish and to earn more money. Uh, so if you help them uh, earn more money, so they will buy uh, your feed. Uh, big companies they are also pursuing a whole chain uh, development, including uh, fish figlings, uh, fish uh, feed premix, health products, uh, feed ingredients, and fish products uh, processing. Uh, some companies sell feed and figlings in bundles, and uh, finally, they will buy the fish produced by farmers. Uh, uh, so these uh, five companies are public shared aquafeed companies, uh, the most big uh, companies including uh, Tongwei, Haida, Da Binong, uh, uh, New Hope, and Tech Bank. Uh, so their revenue and profits are, are very clear uh, from the, the share market uh, in the internet. So uh, we can uh, we can see the revenue and the uh, profits. So I'm not uh, reading exactly. And uh, I'm, uh, this slide, I'm, I want to introduce a, a very good company. I think it's the best aquafit company, uh, Hyde. Uh, uh, is uh, present number one in China, and the total earning uh, increased by 6.2% uh, in 2019 uh, compared to the year before. And the total uh, aquafeed production in this company in 2019 is uh, uh, 3.5 million tons, uh, increasing by 13% compared to the year before. Uh, the extruded feed increased by uh, 20 uh, percent. Uh, the pallet feed keeps stable, but the profits of this section decreased by uh, 2.3 percent. Uh, this company is crazy on research. They have uh, 10 research center. They have uh, 71 employees with a PhD degree and more than 800 employees with master degree and more than 4,000 uh, employees with bachelor degree. Uh, so. Uh, it's the first company starting at service marketing and leading uh, the industry in this area. And uh, uh, they are also good at whole chain development and quality control of feed. Uh, the main foreign uh, aqua feed companies in China uh, include uh, CP from Thailand and Cargill, Squirting, uh, Bioma, Ila. Uh, Inway and two uh, Japanese companies on the Lawi feed. And also the feed active companies like Norwas, uh, Evonik, uh, Ortec, DSM, Kermi, Fast, and Bayer. And uh, uh, China's aqua, uh, 
feed companies are also going abroad and Vietnam is the first step. I think Vietnam is under the spotlights of the aquafit industry all over the world. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, concluding remark. Uh, I, I want to introduce the uh, challenge and prospect of China's aquafit industry. So uh, the challenge first is uh, uh, insufficient resource. Uh, there are severe short, uh, shortage of water and feed ingredients, uh, especially we are, uh, we are undergoing a, a trade war uh, against uh, the United States. Uh, so the feed ingredients price is going up. And uh, the second one is uh, uh, ad hoc feed uh, companies are facing with more and more strict governmental regulation or environmental protection, although still tax free. And uh, uh, prospect, uh, we have to accelerate the feed ingredients processing uh, technology. Uh, we have to ex explore new uh, protein source and lipid source, and we have to uh, enhance the processing technology, including the enzyme uh, lysis and fermentation. And we have to promote use of formulated feed, and in particular, extruded feed. And, uh, uh, we have finished the systematic and precise nutrition research and uh, also uh, for the companies enhance service marketing strategy and increasing the, uh, the success rate of agricultural practice. Uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, my presentation. Uh, sorry for some mistakes on the internet. Thank you very much, Shogo. Yeah, thank you. No problem for the uh, uh, the disruption because you have given an excellent coverage of the aquafeed industry in China. And we have a few questions coming up. Uh, uh, for example, uh, you have suggested there is a drop in production, feed production, there is a decrease. So what could be the reason? For Sorry, the I, so I need to, to stop the, the share. Uh, yes, that's okay. Yeah, you can stop the share. Yes. Uh, okay. But that's okay. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So what uh, what could be the reason for the past few years from September from twenty eighteen to twenty twenty? You said decrease in feed production. Uh, Is it because of yes, uh, uh, I think it's uh, because of the, uh, the uh, I think it's the main reason for the decrease is the uh, the emerge our uh, feed feed companies. So uh, I think in ten years before, uh, there are more than uh, one, uh, more than ten thousand feed companies, and now uh, there are about uh, thirty. Uh, there are about three thousand companies. So uh, the number of feed companies is uh, uh, decreasing. Uh, so uh, the feed production is decreasing, and also the second reason, uh, I think, is the. Uh, the the agriculture uh, production is uh, is decreasing due to some uh, uh, some uh, reasons like the uh, the weather and uh, like the pandemic uh, last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, uh, it's still amazing to see the 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 extent of uh, research and development in the feed companies especially the Hyde Group, which is uh, the biggest company. Uh, the strong emphasis on research. Uh, but the question is, is there any, uh, uh, the governmental regulations, how the government support the industry uh, in, in its growth? Uh, there are two things. Is there any, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I think uh, China, uh, China government is uh, play very important roles in supporting the development of aquafit uh, industry. Uh, so first, uh, uh, there are a huge uh, funding on the, the nutrition research. 
So we have more than, uh, we have uh, several uh, hundreds aquaculture species. So uh, we need a very big funding uh, on the research. And the, the, res the research funding during the past 20 years, I think is, uh, uh, is kept increasing by uh, 20% every each year. Uh, so uh, there's a very big uh, uh, funding on the uh, aquafit research in the in the in the uh, universities and the institutes. There are more than uh, 100 uh, uh, institutes and uh, universities which uh, conduct aqua nutrition uh, research. And this is uh, uh, the first uh, uh, supporting. I think the second one is. Uh, uh, you know that uh, I have mentioned that the, the aquafit companies are tax-free in China. Uh, so uh, China government uh, is uh, is where puts the agriculture a very important uh, position because agriculture can employ most people and uh, uh, can uh, ensure the food supply safety. Uh, <laughs> low uh, interest loans and uh, uh, low rent loans to the aqua feed companies. Uh, so uh, I think this, uh, th these two uh, factors are the main reasons supporting the uh, development of aqua feed industry in China. So let's so that's, that's all. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we also know that the Chinese government, uh, you know, is very keen to reduce the environmental impact from aquaculture. Do these regulations, the recent regulations, had any? Uh, they had. Did they have any impact on the aqua food industry? Uh, did they contribute to this decrease in production? Uh, yes. Um, uh, I, as I have mentioned, that the production of aquaculture uh, it decreased during the last three years, and the uh, main part is the uh, cages in the lakes. Uh, because of uh, the environmental concerns, the government uh, uh, takes uh, most of the cages out of the lakes. So uh, this part uh, aquafit production uh, is uh, decreasing uh, rapidly. And uh, also, uh, for uh, if you want to start a new uh, aquafit companies, it's not easy uh, any, any longer. Uh, so you have to uh, you have to pass uh, very strict uh, uh, environmental uh, evaluations. So the governments want to make sure that this new feed company uh, uh, has very uh, minimized impact on the uh, local area. Uh, so uh, so uh, one reason is that the many, so one impact, impact on the aquafield production is the the, lay, the, KG, the net cages uh, in lakes are taken out. And then uh, starting a new feed company is not so easy and, and longer. So that's it. Yeah, I think you also talked about the collected and extruded feeds. Uh, do they, uh, like, uh, what is the impact of these different feeds on the environment? Because you know, feed quality, uh, you know, impacts a lot on the environmental impact. So, what kind of impact the feed quality can be on the environment? Can make on the environment. Uh, th this is a, 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 a very uh, important question because. Uh, uh, we know that uh, if we uh, feed the fish, uh, extruded fish, there will be a very few uh, uh, re remnants. There will be very few uh, waste. Uh, so uh, if we uh, feed the fish, uh, pelleted feed, or uh, we directly use trash fish, and there will be uh, a, a big waste. And the waste will uh, pollute the water, and then the, uh, the polluted water uh, may cause uh, uh, disease uh, breakout. So yeah. that, that's a uh, clear question. Yeah, good. Um, and again, on the uh, because we have a lot of uh, questions on the feed decline or decrease. Is it uh, uh, how the international players? Because you showed many leading domestic companies, 
and also many international players like the CP from Thailand or other big companies. So how do they play in the market uh, with their share of, or are they gaining more inroads into the local market? Uh, okay. Uh, in the beginning of uh, China's aquafit uh, development, I think uh, the foreign uh, companies play an uh, important role. Uh, they bring the capital, they bring the technology, and they most importantly, they bring the competition. Uh, so uh, at the beginning, the foreign companies like CP, uh, they have a dominating uh, position in China's uh, aquafit and or all, all the animal feed uh, industry. Uh, but uh, with the development of China's aquafeed companies, uh, so uh, I think the China's aquafeed companies is more familiar with the China's market. So uh, the market share of foreign companies is uh, decreasing uh, gradually. Uh, and uh, now uh, at present, uh, the local, the domestic companies are dominating China's uh, aquafit uh, market. I think uh, there's a very uh, little chance, little opportunities for the foreign companies. Okay, and, and what about the collaboration with <laughs> companies with the foreign companies? Any ongoing collaborations or are they, are they have independent markets? Yes, there are some uh, corporations like uh, Scratching. They, 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 they bought uh, uh, local companies uh, uh, in Guangdong province. And uh, I think they have uh, uh, a share in the company. And also some other uh, com foreign companies, they uh, not operate individually. Uh, in China, they uh, chose to cooperate, uh, co uh, cooperate with some local uh, companies. So that's that's a way. That's a way for foreign companies to earn money uh, in in China. I think it's an efficient way. Yeah, thank you. And and you mentioned uh, about the use of trash fish because you said that there the use of trash fish is reducing. Uh, uh, and is it uh, a result of the government regulations? Uh, because government. Uh, regulation stop use of trash fish and promote the use of, uh, you know, uh, formulated feed. So what is the government regulations impact uh, on the use of trash fish? Um, yes, there's, a, there's no exact schedule of the law uh, launching, but we are uh, expecting the launching of the new law. And the government is uh, now is discussing about uh, whether and when to uh, to launch a new law to forbid the use of trash fish. And we, uh, I think uh, the day is not very far because in the United States and in Europe, uh, this law to forbidding the use of trash fish uh, has been launched uh, many years before. So these regulations are anyway that have come out. <laughs> okay. Yes, I think it's nearly. Uh, the, the, and and uh, questions on the scale of the business, uh, co-feed business. For example, you see that large corporations are engaged in, in a co-feed business. What is the potential for smaller players? For example, as NIDAC, we are interested in, in, in promoting cooperative societies or small corporate, not big corporations, but small pharma cooperatives to engage in a co-feed business. What do you think? Uh, is it feasible for smaller players? Uh, with your experience in China, do you have smaller cooperative societies uh, at the provincial level, for example, who are in the feed business? Or is it feasible for other countries? Uh, in China, uh, although the, the, the bigger companies is getting bigger and bigger, but uh, as I mentioned, uh, small companies, small players uh, uh, can still uh, survive a long period. And uh, I'm sorry that there's uh, no uh, such uh, cooperative organizations in China to help the small players. Uh, but uh, I think the, the, the diverse market uh, of agriculture uh, determines the survival of uh, small companies because some activities, uh, some agricultural activities, they happen in uh, rem a remote area. 
And uh, maybe some big companies, they don't like to do business there. And also uh, for some uh, special uh, species and a, a special uh, agriculture modes. So there are many agriculture modes. There are net cages uh, in coastal area, net cages in lakes, and there are in indoor uh, cement uh, systems and uh, also uh, recirculate agriculture system. So some small companies, they may be good at uh, a very uh, small area. Uh, so in this area, they can uh, get uh, uh, differentiate uh, competition advantages. So uh, these factors determine that these uh, small uh, players, these small companies that can uh, still uh, uh, survive in a long period. Okay, great. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, yeah, then comes the, 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 the point you mentioned about the household farms, for example. Uh, like uh, in your data, you have, uh, you have given the farm feed data, uh, the aqua feed production data, does it also include the farm made feeds? For example, the household farmers may be using their own feed. Is there any, any uh, reliable data on the use of farm made feeds in China? Uh, uh, at present, I don't have the, the data and I, I don't have the data about how, how much percent use the household uh, made feed. Uh, but uh, mm, I think uh, not, 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 not high. The, the percentage is not high. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you, you still think there is some, some share of the feed is farm made feed, isn't it? Um, yes, but uh, I don't have the exact, exact data uh, about half percent, but uh, because uh, the the aqua feed industry in China is is I think it's very de development, so there's not much room for them to uh, survive. Yeah, I, I was curious to know something <laughs> like you said. said Middleman. Middle middle this meeting is being screen. recorded. This uh, uh, but, but many parts of the world they wanted to avoid intermediaries in the in the marketing or in the business, so. Can you explain more on the, the role of middlemen in uh, intermediaries in the aqua feed industry in China? Uh, okay. Uh, I, I think middleman system in, in China is very, very important because uh, the aquaculture activities are usually in very remote area. So we cannot buy the feed in the supermarket like uh, buying other uh, products. So uh, the middleman, they look. They are usually uh, located where the the aquaculture farms are located. So uh, very near to the farms. Uh, as I mentioned, they not only sell uh, feeds. They also sell drugs. They uh, like the health products and uh, uh, other products. Uh, and they also produce service. Uh, provide service to the farmers. And uh, most importantly, sometimes the uh, they also buy the fish products from the farmers. Uh, and also, you know, sometimes they, they have a role or bank, so they provide loans to the farmers. So they have uh, uh, multiple roles, uh, not a uh, uh, feed retailer only, but also a uh, very multi apply roles. So the middleman system in China is, I think, is very important to the, uh, to the farmers and uh, also to the aqua feed companies. That sounds interesting. Um, yeah, I think we are coming almost close to the end of this program, but uh, there is a question. Yeah, I think there are more questions coming. Um, uh, can you highlight the, the role or the importance of fish in the Chinese uh, diet or why fish farm is so important in China? Because China is the biggest producer. So how does, or what makes China the, the biggest consumer of fish? Uh, what do you think? Uh, okay, uh, as we know that uh, China has a very uh, big population. Uh, we have um, more than 1 billion people to feed. Uh, so uh, food supply uh, safety is always a very important question in China. Uh, so, 
uh, we will explore every way to uh, to ensure that we uh, the the food supply uh, is safe in China. So aquaculture is a very efficient way to produce a high quality uh, protein. And uh, this is the uh, the first one. I think uh, China government is uh, uh, ensure that aquaculture can uh, contribute to the food supply uh, safety. And then uh, because aquaculture, the fish, uh, the fish, fish pro uh, products is also uh, also have a very uh, high price, uh, especially for the marine fish products. They uh, they are delicious and they have a high price. So uh, so uh, this uh, can help the Chinese to uh, transform uh, to a better life. I think a better food. Okay. Um, okay. There is a more specific question. I think uh, uh, maybe the last question in that sense. Uh, what are the kind of ingredients used in China? Because to make the FCR lower, because especially this is a question on the context of cold water fishes. Uh, over for any fish or for that matter, how the efficiency of feed uh, is maintained in China by keeping the FCR low? Is it a selection of ingredients important or, or the production process in your opinion? Uh, I think uh, uh, not a single technology can keep the, uh, the FCR low. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, due to a system, uh, a systemized, systemized research, uh, including the uh, feed ingredients, processing technology and uh, the, the research on nutrients uh, requirements and uh, the exploration of feed additives and also uh, the feeding uh, strategies. I think uh, we cannot uh, attribute the, this uh, lower FCR to a single factor. So these are uh, uh, integrated uh, uh, factors, I think. Is there any, any, <laughs> any quality laws in the extruder? or uh, any, because China also, I think, produces a lot of ex extruders and export to other countries. So how the quality, the feed manufacturing process is controlled? Uh, uh, sorry, this question? Is there any, any, any laws of production due to the production protocol or something like that? Maybe the cooking temperature or is it going to affect the quality of the feed? Uh, uh, I think uh, a very important uh, information is uh, uh, many China, uh, Chinese aquafit company is uh, uh, developing uh, the feed processing technology uh, along with the research on uh, nutrient requirements. Uh, because if we uh, uh, we only uh, improve the feed processing technology, uh, maybe it's not enough. We have to uh, improve the feed processing technology along with the uh, formulation uh, improving. Uh, the, the formulation is very important for the, the, the extruded, uh, extruded, uh, extruded feed uh, production. So maybe I'm not very uh, familiar with the processing uh, protocols. Okay. So maybe uh, on the, uh, you know, the, the ingredient prices, uh, you know, how does it affect the industry? Because you said that in the raw material prices are going up. So ingredient prices and how uh, it is affecting the industry. Uh, yes, uh, the, the price of ingredients is uh, in, in, it give a very uh, a big uh, impact on the, the aquafit industry. Uh, we know that the the price of fish meal is is going uh, up, and uh, not only the price of fish meal, uh, the price of other ingredients like the soybean meal uh, is also going up. Uh, you know that we have a, a trade war against the United States of America, and we import uh, one, uh, I think, uh, uh, nearly uh, 0.1 billion tons of soybean each year from the United States of America.
so uh, if this part of ingredients going up, the price going up, uh, the whole uh, cost or aquifer of uh, nearly every uh, species is going up. So we are uh, developing uh, technologies of not only uh, fish meal uh, replacement, but also soybean meal uh, repl replacement. So we have to uh, explore uh, many as many uh, ingredients like uh, rib seed uh, meal, uh, cotton seed meal, <laughs> meal <laughs> other uh, meals, and also lipid sauce. Uh, we, we use the, the chicken oil, the duck oil, uh, and to replace the fish oil. Uh, so we are trying our best to uh, find some new uh, feed ingredients. Also, we, uh, we are developing the uh, ingredients uh, processing technologies to uh, improve the quality of the, uh, the low quality ingredients. So that's it. Okay. okay. Maybe one last question uh, about the shrimp industry. You said uh, the extruders are being used for shrimp uh, instead of pellets these days. Is it? Uh, do you think uh, extruded feed are being used for shrimp also? Yes, extruded feed uh, used uh, for shrimp culture is only I think only uh, one tenth. Okay. Only one tenth of the, the production is used uh, is to this phase. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think perhaps uh, the last question. Uh, we will stop here uh, with uh, one more question about the broader impact of the pandemic. You know, we are all uh, in the middle of this pandemic. So, how the industry was affected, impacted by this pandemic, ongoing situation uh, in Chinese industry. Oh, I, I think it's, it's very lucky that uh, uh, China, China government is uh, very good at control pandemic. So uh, I think now this year, uh, pand pandemic, have, uh, I think it doesn't have any impact on the uh, agriculture industry. Uh, last year, it has a, a big uh, impact on the industry, uh, including uh, reducing some uh, products or some species. But this year, I think it's getting normal. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think uh, good news uh, because everybody is worried about the situation, evolving situations everywhere. I think uh, we are all resilient to, to overcome this crisis. So I should thank you very much for giving your time and explaining a very nice uh, description of the industry and also taking time to reply, reply to and then we have i think we have an excellent audience today i can see uh, uh, from nidak's side our uh, the vice chairman of nidak mr uprati from nepal he has been here and uh, we can also see uh, mr tomio who is a fao country head in india uh, and and many other dignitaries uh, who has attended this 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 uh, meeting important discussion. In fact, we had uh, initially we we were thinking as a discussion, and then it turned out to be a much more extensive presentation and uh, interaction. So I think thank you very much for your time and. Uh, uh, and all the participants for attending this important conference, uh, important meeting from NIDAC. And uh, we'll also be coming back, back with another meeting next month, uh, similar keynote series. And uh, we will welcome you again for that meeting. And uh, uh, I would like to pass on to Ms. Uh, Resita, who is a program manager of uh, NIDAC Bangkok and uh, is a host of this meeting. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. So on behalf of NIDAC, I would like to thank to all the participants today for attending this NIDAC co-op talk series. And thank for IT supporting NIDAC XCOM members and all others to making this event success. Especially deepest gratitude to our speaker today, Dr. Ho Guo Xui. Uh, senior researcher of Yellow Sea Fishery Research Institute, 
from China. He is the key person of today's success. Thank you very much for your informative presentation for fish feed industry in China, sir. And thank you for you all of your attention. We will have the co-op talk again next month. So looking forward to seeing you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye from Bangkok. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.